Eric Darling here with the Darling the Data. All those D's. Deep in the D's there. Uh, in today's video, we're going to talk about drum roll, please. Index intersection plans. Um, no jokes about me not having a driver's license, please. Uh, these are a, a type of query plan that you will see when your you know table has multiple indexes on it and SQL Server chooses to use some combination of those indexes. But it's a little bit different from the index union thing because rather than just concatenating the two streams of data, we do something a little bit different. And we're going to talk about that uh, in, in a couple of seconds as soon as we talk about how you can buy things from me. Uh, if you would like a membership to this channel, four bucks a month, uh, not bad. That's like, I don't know, with inflation, that's like a quarter of a box of mac and cheese, right? Uh, if, if, if you would rather have a quarter of a box of mac and cheese, I totally understand. So would my kids. Uh, the, the, then you can do all sorts of other fun things that help you, uh, that help me, that help you help me like like and comment and subscribe because that's that's nice things to do uh if you need help with sql server problems because i am a sql server problem fixer uh, i am available to do all of these things and more and my rates are reasonable if you would like some reasonable rates on high quality sql server performance tuning that will last you a literal lifetime you'll never have to subscribe to this chunk of training. You can get it for about 150 US dollars with this discount code. Uh, this, this link is also in the, in the, in the show, in the video description, just like the membership thing. And just like Intel timing out, being able to find driver updates constantly in the background, that thing shows up like every 45 seconds. If you would like to see me live and in person without <laughs> Intel driver updates, timing out in the background, uh, you can, actually, they might still show up because I have to use this laptop for the, those things too. Uh, you can catch me at Past Data Summit with Kendra Little doing not one, but two days of SQL Server performance tuning magic, uh, November 4th and 5th in Seattle, Washington. And uh, that's, that's the last event that I have so far for 2024. Gosh, 2025 sure did sneak up quick, didn't it? Golly, I feel like I just paid taxes. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you can tell me if there's an event near you that you think I might be a good addition to. And if they are looking for pre-con speakers, there's a chance I'll even show up looking pretty. Uh, you never know. Crazy things, ha crazy things happen in this wild data world of ours. But with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about in index intersection. Now, uh, just like in the index union um, video, I have two single key column indexes. And just like in the index union video, two single, column key, two single key column indexes are not strictly necessary for this to happen. Uh, it's just easier for me to do this way. Um, I, I, I have to type less and I have to work less hard on the demo part of it, which means that I can record it and show you stuff better. So that's great for everyone. So in this first query right here, uh, we are going to uh, run a query that says where creation date is greater than this and last activity date is less than this. And the resulting query plan will miraculously use index intersection. You can see that right here where we seek into this index and we seek into this index. But then instead of like in the index union plan, there was this concatenation operator. There was a regular concatenation and then there was merge concatenation. But now instead of concatenating, we actually join those two indexes together to get our result set. So we take all the rows from this one and we join all the rows from this one. How do we join those rows though? Well, it's just like with a key lookup. SQL Server has the, um, the clustered primary key for the post table stored away in the, as a hidden key column in both of those non-clustered indexes because they are uh, not unique indexes they are the, the clustered index key column, in this case singular, is an additional key column hidden away in there. If this index were unique, the, cl the clustered index column would be an in treated like an included column. So SQL Server uses the ID column to join those two indexes together here. Just like with the key lookup, it would use the clustered index key column or columns to get data out of the non-clustered index and then seek into the clustered index to locate the additional uh, rows that we need to get the additional columns that we need out. 
So it's almost the same principle, just with a slightly different join setup. Rather than a nested loops join, we have a hash join. And uh, I don't know, I guess SQL Server just felt strongly about that. You might see other join types in there. Like you could see a merge join in there because I have put a merge join hint on this plan. And golly and gosh, doesn't that just work out in our favor? But you can see why SQL Server did not choose the merge join plan naturally uh, for, the other, for the other query, which uh, other than the merge join hint was identical because it would have to fully sort both of those result sets in order to uh, use the merge join. Now you totally could see this in real life if SQL Server costed the hash join out of uh, proportion to the two sorts in a merge join, uh, or if you had a quality predicates uh, on the two date columns, but two date time columns rather, but and come on, who uses a quality predicates on date time columns? It's, like, it's obsessively difficult, like bleh. I don't know what would be wrong with you to do that. Um, you would have to so very specifically be looking for something. For a date column, maybe, but holy cow. Um, now, uh, you might see uh, SQL Server uh, choose different join types. So the, here, here because, I had, because I said it I, when I had to do it, we are going to use a, uh, two equality predicates here. We're not going to find any rows, and that's okay. But here's an example of where a merge join plan happens somewhat more naturally because we don't have to sort that input. The reason why we don't have to sort the input is because we are using two equality predicates. And if you've watched some of my other videos on indexes and how indexes work, you'll already know that when you have equality predicates, like an equality, so in this case, we have an equality predicate on creation date, which means that the order of the ID column will be preserved. And the query up above that where we had a, a range predicate or an inequality predicate greater than, equal to, less than, less than, equal to, all that stuff, uh, that, that ordering is not preserved in the index. So that's why it would have required sorting up there but not down here with the equality predicates. And just like with the index union plan, SQL Server is able to do uh, index intersection plus a key lookup. So to imitate the index union uh, demos a little bit, we are going to select the post type ID column and group by the post type ID column. And of course, since the post type ID column is not a clustered index key column, it is not going to be present hidden anywhere in either of these non-clustered indexes. There is no invisible post type ID. So when we run this query and we get the resulting query plan, even though nothing comes back, SQL Server still faithfully executes the query uh, does a seek into uh, this index, does a seek into this index, uses a hash join once again uh, to, um, to, uh, do the, to join those two indexes together on the, po on the ID column, which is the clustered primary key. And then we have a key lookup back to the post table to get that post type ID column. And just to sort of bring the point home that I was making before, we are outputting post type ID from the lookup in our seek predicate is the ID column, because that is the clustered primary key of the post table. That's the column that we use in the lookup to locate the correct row for the columns that we need. Pretty cool, right? So again, single key column indexes, generally not the first thing that I recommend for SQL Server. Um, you can end up with some tremendously weird, complicated, probably ill-performing query plans if you are the type of person who creates a single key column index on every single column in the table. Not usually a good idea. Compound index keys with included columns are usually the best strategy uh, for either OLTP or um, you know, you know, reporting type workloads or rather mixed workloads. You know, there's always the column store question, but you know, that one's a little bit too much to answer in, 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 in the, a video that's not about the column store index question. So. We're not going to get into that, but we are going to say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves, and I hope you learned something, and I hope you will stick around and watch more videos, because I have many, many more to come. Many such videos. Who knows what the next one will be about? It might even be about something crazy, like DOP and bitmaps. You could, might, might even put money on such a thing. If there is, if there is like a betting channel for me and what my next video is going to be about, I would heavily suggest voting on dot bitmaps. I would not suggest voting on join or clause plan patterns. And I'm not saying that because I'm going to switch the order of those <laughs> and make you lose all your money. I would much rather have you spend your money on me in other ways. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching and I will see you over in the next video.